After this pop the balloon show, these two individuals matched and they appeared to be a handsome young couple already. So why didn't they have any level of success after the show wrapped up? Let's talk about it. Welcome back or welcome to Uncle ABL. And in today's video, we're talking about the pop the balloon show. Now, this has gone viral, not just this episode and this follow up we're going to get into, but the entire show. And if you don't know about the show, basically you have 10 guys or 10 girls lined up and they're holding a balloon. One girl or one guy comes out at a time. And if those who are holding the balloon don't like the person, they pop their balloon. If they do like them, they hold it. Now, after a while, they're asking questions, going back and forth, trying to get to know the person. And that might cause the balloon to get popped. I've sometimes seen the one guy or girl who comes out pop the people in lines balloon for them. So it's a pretty interesting, fresh and new show. Shout out to Arnett Amuli. And if I said that wrong, please forgive me, Arnett, but shout out to her for the show. Very creative, very new. And this episode right here is a follow-up of one of the couples who matched at the end. The balloon button popped. They're together. They matched. They're going to go on a date and try to live happily ever after. But unfortunately that didn't work out. And the million dollar question is why, what happened? The answer is very simple, but once we hear from them, it'd be crystal clear. Now, of course, I will link to this in the box, but without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Okay, well, so this is the moment, you know, everyone's always waiting to hear about. Since you guys matched on the show, yeah. has there been a day? Have y'all gone anywhere or any of that good stuff? Serenity, you want to answer? I was going to ask you, but no, we did not go on a date. Um, right after we wrapped the shoot, we we did go to the club with a handful of people. Okay. And now someone said that that might be a date that counts as a date. Well, what happened was there was an after party for the pop the balloon show. So when they got done recording, they er, everybody went all the contestants and everybody. If you wanted to go, you were invited to the club, and then they went to that immediately afterward, just for a little bit of context. It was hard to have a conversation in the club. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he seems like a really great guy. But um, I will say after the show went live, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been getting a mass amount of just inquiries for my business. Um, and then also there's a lot of guys out there applying pressure. Mm. And you either applying the pressure or you feeling it. And I wasn't getting that from Adit. Mm. So keep that in mind. Okay, so when they matched it was not a live show. It's pre-recorded. After the show went live, now her DMs are lit up. People are hitting up for business and also romantic interest. So keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Y'all hang tight. Yeah. Okay, what's going on? Oh, she threw back at me. <laughs> hey, uh, we did go out after that, you know, and as she said, it was the club and mm -hmm. it's too noisy. You know, we right. caught up a little bit, you know, family, you know, uh, basic questions about, you know, profession, personal interests and likes. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, try to schedule a date for the following weekend right before the episode dropped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it happened that she was, you know, she works out, she works late on Fridays and it was either a Saturday or a Sunday and she... She had something to do on Saturday and she had a friend's birthday to attend on Sunday. So I just, I told her, you know, I know you're busy. I'm busy as well. Just let me know when, when your schedule opens up and I'll be happy to take you on a date. Okay. So did the schedule open up and you, have you hit him up? No. Okay. So look, the ball's in her court. So they went to the club after they're talking or whatever. Okay. Now let's schedule something else when it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing, not in the club, louder environment, other people, let's have a date, a dinner or going to the park or whatever it is. Now he's hitting her up. She's busy over the weekend. No problem. Hey, I know you're busy. I'm busy too. Whenever you have some free time, just hit me up. Let me know and I'll take care of the rest. I don't think he was asking her, Hey, you take me on the date. You take me here. You take me there. All he's saying is, no, you're busy. Whenever you're not busy, let me know, and then I'll take care of the rest. I think that's what he's saying, but let's keep on going. What happened? <laughs> Why not? Um, there just have been a few other guys applying that pressure, and um, once you allow so much time to pass, it just kind of falls by the wayside. I, like I said, I do appreciate a guy who's showing interest and in applying that pressure mm -hmm. and 
kind of won't leave me alone mm. in a sense. So and you want him just, to keep trying. Just apply pressure. If you were really interested and this isn't this wasn't for like a clout experience yeah. or an opportunity to push your business, mm -hmm. like, okay, try again. Mm. I was busy this weekend, but there's other days in the week. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, you know, Madit, she wants you to apply that pressure. What's You don't want to apply the pressure? What's up? I don't mind applying the pressure, but really at this age and at this point in my life, reciprocity is everything. Okay. Right. Yes. As a gentleman, I reach out to try to schedule a date because mm. I had to get my balloon back. Mm. Yeah. I knew it was dumb from me to say you didn't have a bracelet on. <laughs> That's something I can get you anytime. Now, let's pause right here. What he's talking about for context is that he had initially popped his balloon because she wasn't wearing the bracelet. It's a whole story behind that, but it's not really important. The point is that he got his balloon back, and then they wound up matching. So he was interested. She was interested. That's the context. But let's keep on going. Right. So, But I took it back, and yeah. everybody knows that. I don't know why they're letting up my ass still. I was yeah. the one who took you out of the show. Everybody else said what they had to say, and they kept their balloon popped. So... But hey, bring the heat. I can take it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but to your point, applying pressure, and I knew it, right? Mm -hmm. Once the episode dropped, and we should blame it on our lead or something. You me? <laughs> probably could have waited. Let me, let me take her out first and see how it works before you let the gates open and everybody else come, you know, run yeah. again. Because what happened, like I said, once the show aired, now the whole world can see her. I'm going to just pause right here because this is an important point to make. This is kind of an extension of dating apps. These dating shows are like dating apps on cocaine, steroids, methamphetamine, whatever. Let's go back a little bit, a little bit of history. Then we're going to get back to the video. Back in the day before airplanes, you were only able to date somebody that's pretty much right on your street, the girl next door. That was your dating option. And that's it. And then once you have a little bit more travel, okay, still people dated within their area. Oh, in, their, in their neighborhood in New York and their neighborhood in Chicago, maybe you're born in Mississippi and you move to Chicago and you find somebody from Chicago. You weren't traveling to date. You would travel for work and you would find somebody right in your particular area. But then as time goes on and people can travel more and for cheaper, it becomes easier to have long distance love and the internet comes out. You're able to get that going on. But when dating apps came out, the average person no longer was constrained to their neighborhood, to their city. They have a bigger piece of the city, sometimes a bigger piece of the state. So rather than just dating in Brooklyn, you're dating in the entire New York City. Then it became the whole tri-state area. And now with the dating apps, the whole world is available to you, potentially. Guys from all over the planet, not just where she lives in her city, not just in her state, not just in the metro, but the whole world. So now my man over here might be, you know, well-spoken, well-dressed, handsome guy, got money, worldly. So what? Now I got a thousand guys just like you in my DMs. So now it becomes, okay, who's the best option? This is hypergamy on cocaine, but let's keep on going. Because this is a uh, woman here. You need to yeah, apply that pressure. No, it's, uh, I mean, th th that's from her point of view. Uh -huh. My point of view is I tried to schedule a date. You were the one that were busy. What did I say? I understand you're a professional woman. You got a lot of things going on. And so am I. Please let me know if it opens up the following weekend. Do you really expect me to say, hey, has your schedule opened up yet? You know we did match. It's going viral around the world. They're expecting something from us. <laughs> hey, Madit, my schedule is open the following weekend. Let me know what the plan is. Happy to do it. I was waiting on you, but I didn't know the DMs were coming. That's part of the strategy as well. I want, I go places, right? Don't, don't, don't let the places I'll be in sometimes fool you. Like from the, all the way from South Sudan, be the multi- that's, that's where he's from, Sudan, South Sudan. Multiple countries, education, free scholarships, masters, my profession that I'm doing, all earn, all right? All earn. And so my point is, if I'm gonna chase you, I wanna see the interest. And I go to different rooms. I don't want my woman looking up over her shoulder for who the best version of Madit is. I don't want that person with me. If you're with me, see it through. We didn't even get to go on a date. So you didn't feel that there was any interest coming? There was no right interest. Now. I did see the DMs. I was reading some of the comments. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see. It's a test. Mm, okay. Is she going to fall for a that? Test? Or is We're she single. Gonna... 
Or is she going to see the guy that she met? See, now that whole thing about the test, she's just latching onto that as an excuse as to why she did not match up with him, why she did not follow up. She's just trying to find some kind of fault in the argument. Really, his argument was rock solid. And throughout his whole time talking, she didn't say a word until that whole test comment. But really what he said was right. It's like, look, I'm not going to chase you down. Ultimately, you weren't interested. You had other options. And the reason why you had so many options is because the show came out and guys, they, they see your name. They have You have your Instagram account on there. So guys are going to hit you up who are just at the house watching, not guys who were on the show. Medit might have been the best available option to her from those 10 guys that were right there on the show. But now she has 10,000, 100,000 guys in the DMs and she's able to pick from them. Match with. We're not in a, a relationship. So what do you mean? You want to I know we're give not me a, a test. This is not school. I'm a single woman. <laughs> you had your chance. You blew it one time. You thought it over, got a balloon back and you didn't think that you needed to apply pressure. Mm. You have to prove yourself. Okay. A from, bracelet? From your point of view. Come on now. I mean, that's just BS. There's there's more. But ultimately, ultimately what happened here is there were so many options that he kind of became insignificant. Applying pressure, look, that's um really bad advice. <laughs> Don't do that because at a certain point, that's called harassment. If you talk to a young lady and you're trying to set up a date and she's like, oh, no, I'm busy. Really right there, that might be a sign of low interest. All right, check it out. I'm not really going to bother you. Whenever you have some time available, hit me up, and then we'll set something up. If you don't hit me up, I presume you're not interested, which is exactly what was going on. She's not interested. She has other guys she's more interested in. Rather than going on the first date with him or another time with him, she'll go on the first date with this guy, that guy. She'll go on 100 first dates, no sex, unless she finds somebody that she's really attracted to over the moon, some big basketball player, she'll let him get it. And that's kind of what's going on right now in 2024 with dating. These women, as I close, have so many options. It's just, it's too much. It's overwhelming. They could do whatever they want to do. And guys, even if you're high value, you got things going on, you often sometimes get pushed to the side. You could be tall, dark, handsome, money. It's just too many individuals. All right. That's part of the reason why they say you got to be at least six foot three hundred thousand dollars, because when they go on their dating app, it's plenty of five foot nine guys that work at McDonald's. But how many guys is going to be in the upper echelon? They know that it's going to be a low amount of people because they got too many guys in the DMs already They're trying to narrow it down. It's like if you got five thousand guys going out for a job, how are you going to be able to narrow it down? You got to find the best of the best. And they're dealing with that right now. This is, again, dating apps on cocaine. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.